situation at 314 Elm Street. Shots fired. Detectives Pruitt and Biggs are trying a side entrance. Ready? Yeah. Clear. Clear. So what do you think? I think with all that noise, we probably lost an element of surprise. Not exactly still flirty. Yeah, I'm talking about you. I can hear this freaking quarter. I was rustling from two blocks away. Close the door, sir. You never heard of slacks? Screw you. I got my first collar wearing these pants. Freeze! Drop the weapon! <laughs> Grossing. I give it maybe six months and you'll be back wearing a badge. Except in Mayberry, you'll be hiding in speed traps and chasing lost cats out of trees. But you got some sudden yearning for boredom? Life, Roy. I got a yearning for life. Oh, can't you feel that feeling? You're not gonna be in the heat of it all. I'm gonna start a family. You were born to be a detective, bro. It's in your blood. I don't want it anymore. Detective Pru. I know it must be hard for you to leave. I love that we're leaving here. I love that we're never coming back. Now, why is there sleeping bags in the trunk of my car? Um, well, you know, sometimes it's better if I just don't tell you everything. <laughs> How far it was. You tired? A little. We'll stop soon and get a drink. <laughs> I think you want to get me drunk. Have your way with me. That's the current plan. <laughs> Wait, one minute. No, less. <laughs> it's a lot further than that. Wait, wait, no, wait. Look. That's beautiful. But that's not where we're moving. Well, that that's correct, but it is actually where we're staying tonight. Under the stars and the moonlit sky. I heard a real to talk about it, and apparently it is it is absolutely beautiful and incredibly romantic. It means sleep outside. Well, yeah, I mean we've been cooped up in Boxland for like a month. Come on, honey. Please. Please. Oh, you give me that look. <laughs> you give me that look. Yes. All right. <laughs> oh no. Hey, 
you holding up? I'm tired. Nothing that a little room service wouldn't do. Oh, forget it. We're camping country, man. Oh, yeah. Suddenly I could use a drink. Well, welcome to the Morning Star. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get you? Yes. Two shots of Cuervo and a Coke pack. Okay. That wild thing must belong to you. Excuse me? It's a 1966 Ford Mustang out there, ain't it? Doing exhaust. You might ask King White Stone tires. It's a 1967 Fastback. It's worse than real dough. Yeah. It's a lot of engine for just one man. You two just passing through? Yeah, we just came up the coast highway. My wife says it's twice as long, but it's twice as pretty. Yeah. Well, Helensville's pretty quiet, I'll say that. Like most places around here. Where are you guys staying? We are camping out. Well, we've got some awful pretty scenery around town. It's God's country. Is there another place around here we can grab a bite to eat? Mm, only place open will be the stop and shop. It's about two miles down the road. Thanks. Thank you. So she says I just don't feel right doing with a guy who's got the words Winona forever tattooed across his chest. Heard like a bit scraping part of that off. Now she won't even call me. Man, you're stupid. What's it say now? Wino forever. You guys catch a load of that city man's ride? Yeah, I saw his ride. Twice as long and twice as pretty. You never camped out as a kid? No. <laughs> well, you must have wanted to. Uh, not really. No. Oh, just like that? No. Well, let me think about it for a second. No. <laughs> no. Cub Scouts have camp outs. You were a Cub Scout. That's only because I thought Chase would dig the uniform. Oh, my God! <laughs> You're unbelievable! Feels a little light again, Bobby. I wouldn't know. Hey, that's what the Indian gave me, okay? Let's have a drink. Can I wait? I gotta go take care of some things. I think I worked up an appetite. I think we both did. Well, there's that little convenience store down the street. Oh, Cheetos and chili dogs. I'll go. No, no, no. You stay here. You wanted the view. Enjoy. Oh. Honey, come on. You've been driving all day. Wait a sec. I think I drive too slow. I think if you drive any slower, you'd be going backwards. Ah! Oh! 
Good. Yeah, good one. <laughs> Just in case you see a bear or something. Yeah, well, if I do, you might want to help the bear. I'll be right back. I love you. I love you too. I love you even more when you bring me food. Oh, <laughs> Cheetos and chili dogs. Uh, chips, candy, right, salsa. We'll right Not from around here, are you? Why do you say that? License plates. But I'd have known anyhow by the way you move. How do I move? Like a man in a real big hurry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'll, I'll pay it for it. Yes, I'm here. about ready to give up on you, then I, I noticed the truck was still here. Well, I was just, uh... L listen, I gotta get home. What's the problem? I don't have a problem. Maybe I can take care of it. Huh? Hey, don't I always take care of it, Bobby? You can't. Uh, don't worry, I'll, I'll handle it. Worry? I, I'm not worried. See, Bobby, money can always be replaced, but... Listen, Jonah, I, I just gotta go, okay? Okay, Bobby. I'm not stopping you. Sorry. 
Please don't shoot me. Seven, start a saline drip, and I'm gonna need 10 milligrams of Valium. Jessica, can you hear me? It's okay now. Nurses only! Okay, back away and give me that Valium. Please, sir, we need to look after her. Wait here. No. Jess, I'll Thank be right you. here. Jessica, we're gonna take care of everything. You're gonna be fine. Excuse me. I need to use a phone. Sure, you can use this one if you like. That's no, private. Is there one outside? Just around the corner. Helensville County Sheriff. I need a sheriff, please. No. When will you be back? Got a nasty concussion. We're doing a rape kit. I'm sorry, I have to ask you this. When was the last time you had sexual relations with your wife? Uh, it was about an hour before. Uh, there's no sign she was actually raped. She's lost some blood, but, well, you already know that. Yeah, can I see her? No, there's no prescribed treatment other than time. And right now, she needs to rest. Any excitement at all could send her right back into shock. These are some skin scrapings I took from underneath her fingernails. I'm sending them to a crime lab in Seattle. I was the detective in, in uh, Seattle. If you address as Roy Biggs, you put my name on it, I'll call ahead and speed things up. Okay, yeah, that would be helpful. Thank you. <clears throat> One more thing. That Worley? Has been here all night. Your wife is in delayed shock. I better find the sheriff. He's here. Uh, down in the basement, level one. Where do you think you're going? This area's off limits. Look, I need to talk to the sheriff. Well, the sheriff's busy right now. We'll go on busy him. It's an emergency. Yeah, what? Daniel Pruitt, sir. I know who you are, detective. I do not. Your wife's admitting for him. What can I do for you? Can we talk? No. We just talked. If you please excuse me, I have another matter. I'll do respect, sir. 
But my wife's just attacking your jurisdiction. I wasn't some flat foot guarding a Dairy Queen. I worked homicide six years in downtown Metro. So cop the cop. I know you just didn't tell me you have another matter. Homicide? So what? What's your point? I went in on this investigation. Look, my wife is practically beaten to death. Come on, this will only take a second. Thanks for doing this, Ed. It's not a problem, Morgan. It's okay, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> what do you got from me so far? Well, it wasn't a real fair fight. His hands are pretty clean, mostly defensive wounds. From the lividity I'd see, he's been dead about two hours. Eye sockets fractured. Rectangular lacerations with jagged markings are imprinted on the cheekbone. But not from, say, somebody's ring. See here? It looks to me like he's been pissed. And not now. See here? Like from underneath the grip of an automatic. It's gotta be nine millimeter. Or at a P9, maybe. Or it could be a Glock. Cause? Cerebral hematoma, back of his skull is cracked. So give me a moment, please. Detective. What? Aside from my wife being attacked? Um, for a second back there, I thought maybe you'd seen him someplace before. Listen, you tell the sheriff. You tell me on the way. Doc Lee says your wife shouldn't be disturbed for morning. I'll have you back by then. Come on. Hey, uh, I think I'm gonna stay here. I need to talk to you. Seattle. Yeah. How'd you hear about the campsite at Eureka Pass? My wife heard it from a realtor. And then we got the directions at a, at a bar called the Morning Star. So someone in there could have uh, overheard you talking about going up there. Well, we weren't whispering. <sighs> and then uh, you left her alone. I went to the store. Left for my gun. What kind of a gun? 38 service issue revolver. You only carried the one. Yeah. Thing is, Detective, <laughs> we found this. One shot fired. Yours. You found at the campsite? No, we found it at the murder scene. Which, uh, means to me, the same man committed both crimes. He could have taken it from the campsite where he uh, attacked your wife and then lost it when he, uh, Is my son in there? Someone ran him off the road and then murdered him. I'm sorry about your son. Thank you. Sheriff. Sure. Morgan. What? My name, Morgan. Morgan. It's 
So you think these two crimes are connected? Two assaults, same night, a few miles apart. It's a good bet, no? Apparently, uh, this wasn't the weapon uh, my son was pistol whipped with. So do you have any leads? I have ideas. Sheriff. Yeah, go ahead, Dave. Cross-check suspects with his prize. Sold batteries and brakes. You're right. He's got a name. Yeah, I'm listening. It's that bookie, John Drexel. You remember him back? Oh, yeah. Read me his resume. A small gambling conviction. He's did a couple of stretches in Lompoc, but two double A's and a double L. That's this year alone. I asked around. Sounds like Bobby was into him for a bundle. No, I settled that debt personally. Bobby must have went back, sure. Where is he? Brother says he's over at JB's. You get that, detective? Yeah. Two aggravated assaults. Another for Luton and Sidious. Who is he? He's a creep. Where are you going? Wait in the car. I said wait in the car. What'd you do? I didn't do nothing. What'd you do? Come here. You want to tell me? Tell me what you did. You want to tell me? McKenna? Suspect resisted, suspect died. You want to tell me? Tell me. That's it. That's it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Enough. Enough. Whatever you think he did, you need evidence to prove it. Where's the bathroom? Down the hall. I need to get back to the hospital, be with my wife. Nah, why don't you uh, let her rest? I'll get you back there in a couple hours. So. You look like you could use a little rest yourself. I'm not tired. Well, couch is yours. If you change your mind, I'm uh, making some coffee. If you want something hotter, it's in the cabinet. I'll take some coffee. Shirt off. What? Take the shirt off. Why? It's wet, full of blood. Hang on, throw it in the machine. Uh, 
That was Bobby about 10 years ago. So were you and your, your son close? Uh, no, not of late anyway. The truth is we weren't even speaking. And um, damn shame of that is that uh, earlier tonight he left me a message on the answering machine. And that was the first time I heard his voice in a long time. Yeah. So uh, what did he say in the message? Not much, really. Uh, he sounded like he was in some kind of fix and needed to talk, and um, it's probably about money, and I just was out in the field. So uh, what do you do around here? Work for this Jonah Gans. He's the guy that owned that bar you were in earlier tonight, along with some other interests. He's got his greedy little fingers and a bunch of pies, and. I've yet to been able to break one of them. So why would he work for a guy like that? Paid well. Right. Yeah. You got something you want to say to me? No, sir. No, I can't imagine what you're going through. But whoever did this to my wife, I want justice too. Okay. Well, then, uh, you help me get the son of a bitch. Yeah, I'll help you any way I can. And uh, when you catch him, what do you intend on doing? Not miss. You're not serious. This ain't the city. Only God is watching. We're, we're police officers. We, we take an oath to uphold the law. We don't have to agree with it. We just have to abide by it. So if I am. Um... If I give you a chance to get even with the guy that attacked your wife, you wouldn't take it. I don't know what I'd do. Hell, you know. Detective Pruitt, he's going to be assisting us in both investigations. I expect right. you to show him the same respect you do me. All right? All right, let's, uh, let's go back to work. Let's go. Not one stone unturned, okay? Not one damn stone. Thanks. 
Daniel! Daniel! No, uh, it just occurred to me, uh, probably came down this road last night on the way to the hospital. Does that happen to see anything? I told you. And remember, we're looking for any sign of a 9mm. If I need to catch you. Yeah. Listen, um, she may be the only real witness we have, so you know, if she's up to it, see if she remembers anything. All right, so she can relive this whole nightmare in some damn trial? No, there won't be any trial. Bobby's truck down to power line, probably causing an outage in the area. So let's start by getting the uh, time frame. Uh, have we ruled out robbery? Uh, that's been bugging me, Mac. Perp stole a 38 from that campsite, but took nothing from Bobby. We found his wallet and his watch still on him. Yeah, with Bobby, it was personal. What about this? I mean, why pistol whip with a nine when he lifted Pruitt's 38? I'm stuck on that, too. We recovered two sets of prints from the gun, not three. And they belong to Pruitt and his wife. Where'd you get Pruitt's? He's a cop. They're on computer file. Uh, got his wife's from personal items at the campsite. Maybe our man uh, wiped his own prints off. I left the other two intact. Uh, he, uh, he definitely dropped that 38 by accident at the uh, struggle. But we got to get some prints. Where do we start? Where do we start? Why would somebody want him dead so bad that they'd beat him to death? Man, there's a gun on you. You do whatever he says. Even let him knock you around. Look, it's the middle of the night, middle of nowhere, no witnesses. If you wanted to kill him, you'd just shoot him. I mean, why take the time to beat him? That's my point. I mean, there's lots of motives. But this guy's... This guy's was rage. Make a list of the people that are least likely to mourn Bobby's passing. Oh, and he, um, he also left me a message at about 10 o'clock. Find out where that call came from. Uh, Sheriff, what about this Detective Pruitt? What about him? Maybe we should check him out some more. Save it. He's a cop. He's going through the same thing I am.
emergency. Come on. Thanks, man. Sure. Sorry about that. Detective Bureau of Biggs. Hey, Roy, it's Prue. Hey, retired countryman. Don't tell me the uh, boredom's got you already. Listen, partner, I need a favor. Yeah, and I need it really quick. Dr. Lee? I need you to check with lab processing. There's an evidence bag coming from a hospital upstate. My name's on it. Evidence? <laughs> Why would your name yeah, be? Just helping out some local sheriff with a sexual assault case. Roy. The emblem has a blood swatch and some skin scrapings. I need a lab to cross the samples and tell me if they come from the same guy. Can you do that? Sure, I can. Danny, is everything okay? How's Jazz? The man, I'll fill you in later. Yeah, and don't tell anyone else. Uh, don't talk to anyone else. I'm on it. I'll call back. Killer. Car. It's a killer. So why would he have your picture in his wallet? I was his girl for a while, I guess. It didn't last long. Why not? He hardly ever touched me. Finally, I just broke it off. Was he angry about that? Oh, him angry? The son of a bitch stole my car. So did you turn him in? Nah, his daddy found out and brought it back. The whole thing was sort of funny at first. And after that, I hated him. Why is that? He beat the living crap out of me. He beat the living crap out of me. No! No, the bike, no, it's him! It's him! No. Morgan. Morgan. I need to talk to you. Not now. Look, there's something I need to tell you. That way. I want to show you something. What is it? Just another shot. Come on. something this time? Yeah. He was at the bar. Some other men. He was with Bobby. I mean, he and Bobby worked for Gann, so, yeah. You know. Anyway, his name's J. Redmond Sawyer. You don't remember talking to anybody besides the barmaid? Yeah, there's a lot of people at the bar, though. And don't, um, remember seeing my son there. I can't be sure. Well, maybe your wife will remember. What? Forgot to pee? Morgan, you need more evidence than this. The Lincoln died in crime. Listen, he's a registered sex offender. He was at the bar with Bobby, and someone saw him with a handgun last week. What the hell's the matter with you? Come on, detective. You right with me. You must think you're pretty smart. What's that supposed to be? Well, I guess you'd have to be. Passing your detective exam so young and all. The job wasn't what you think. Sometimes you're just lucky to go. Well, that's the thing about luck. It often runs out when you least expect it to. Think I could ever be a hot shot detective like you, Mr. Pruitt? I don't really know. Yeah, you must be one smart cop. I guess all those uh, merit citations kind of cancel out those justifiable homicides. Check it up on me. 
Have I done something to offend you, Deputy Forrest? May I call you David? No, you may not. And you listen to me, Detective. We don't need outsiders coming in here telling us how to do our job. We know how to do our job. Morgan asked me to help with this case directly or indirectly. I don't care what he told you. I know you're involved in all this, directly or indirectly. Guard the entrance. The only other way out is that back alley. Uh, you watch that. If you have to shoot, don't miss, okay? Yes, sir. Uh, Matt, can I have a word? Yeah, just a second. You might need this. I take the liberty of having custom reloaded for you. Just go upstairs, look around for red, but don't do anything. Just wait for me, all right? What? But I might remind you, no calls. The young man has been paying off his casino markers with your money. Such men who find themselves in debt, sometimes panic, maybe threaten to make our arrangement together public. And that, Mr. Gantz, can never happen. Yes. Okay. Well. I'll talk to you later. A new man will be making the pickups starting this weekend. I don't like being here. Don't make me come back. I said no more calls. I'm sorry, sir. It's the police. A Detective Pruitt? Get a number. He's not calling, sir. He's here. Can I help you? I'm here to question one of your employees. I assume you have a warrant. Red Sawyer's an ex-convict. We don't need a warrant. <clears throat> Can you find Red Sawyer and ask him to come up here? Yes, sir. McKenna, I'm truly very sorry. Almost had a heart attack when I heard about Bobby. Well, you need a heart for that. This is hardly the time to allow bad blood to boil between us. Bobby was an important man in my business. I'd just given him a promotion. He was like a son to me. He was my son. I think we both have the same interests here, Sheriff. To right a terrible wrong. Mr. Pruitt, isn't it? Try one of my Monte Cristos. Cubans. Just got him yesterday. Had a hell of a time getting him over here, but... Uh, well worth the trouble. No, thanks. Oh, well, yes. <laughs> they are illegal. You're not here to arrest me, are you? Cut the crap. McKenna, why don't you just get off me? I loved Bobby. So, you... You stay out of my face. Hey, boss, what's up? We've got you on a parole violation. Come down the station with us, we need a little chat.
tell me what you were doing back there? No. You tried to kill him, Morgan. You almost killed me. Well, next time, don't impede my investigation. You want to call this an investigation? This is your own personal man. Listen, son. You got enough problems. You want another one right now. The thing is, Forrest was shot with a 9 millimeter. And you tell me why this guy would run if he wasn't guilty. Why? Where's Red now? There's someone up. We got him guarded. Uh, he's going to spend the night here. Look, I want to interrogate him. Yeah, so do I. You can't beat the truth out of him. Is that right? You want the truth, right? You know exactly what I want. Yeah, you made that pretty clear. Um, tomorrow, first thing, uh, we'll go by the crime scene, find whatever evidence we need to clean this thing up. I want you there. So, uh, you got a place to stay tonight? I'll be right here. Yeah, I'm sorry, uh... Is she making any progress? No, she's still pretty out of it. When she's a, a little more alert, I'd like to show her Red's mugshot. Doc says that's too risky. That I can send her. This is not a request. You like it or not, she's got to be questioned. Don't you mean interviewed? She's a victim, not a suspect. You listen. Your wife was attacked. That's a damn tragedy. But she is still alive. Doc, we're leaving in the morning. Um, Sheriff McKenna says she's a material witness in two felony crimes. Now, I had to sedate her again, but I think he aims on hearing what she has to say. There's something else. We couldn't save the baby. No, that's a mistake. She's not pregnant. Actually, she was. About, um, five weeks. this to you. Huh? <sighs> Sir, what happened to that machine? Oh, it's on its way to the junkyard. Skin scrapings and Blood from that shirt of the same type, be negative. But you know, that don't mean squat. I'm gonna have to wait for the DNA. They, uh, they did find something odd in that blood on the guy's T-shirt. What is it? It's chock full of anabolic steroids. One major side effect, no lead in his pencil. Know what I mean? A guy like that probably wouldn't try to rape anybody. Uh, Danny, you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Your sheriff pal sent over another blood sample to be matched a couple of hours ago. The name on it was Redmond Sawyer. Miss McKenna, he was asking some questions. What do you want to know? Spoke to the cap about your service record. You want to tell me what's going on? Right. I don't want to get you in the middle of it. I'll call you back. Sheriff? What? We got a bullet casing. So a fish, it's a nine millimeter. Can I see that? Yeah. If that matches Red's gun, I'd say that's all I need. Okay. 
You guys have the ability to check something like that out here? Do we have the ability? Yes, boy, we damn sure do. Yes, we do. Come on, let's put an end to this. So, Smitty. Red's guilty, right? Uh, yes, sir. He shot David, sir. I mean, my kid. If he did, it wasn't with the gun that he had. Ed compared the uh, grip of his Beretta with the marks on Bobby's face. Said they don't match up. Uh, what about the bullet casing? Sorry, sir. The case you brought in wasn't fired from Red's gun. Um. Wait for the blood to match the finger scrapings. Sir? Yeah. Seems Bobby's truck did cause a power outage near the highway. Uh, lights went out around 11. 11, huh? That's right. Uh, Wayne's got those impressions. He's been working on getting a size and type for the suspect's tire. Uh, says he's close. Oh, where is he? Outside, dropping off Red's pickup. But those tire impressions are too smudged to make it. Yeah, we got a pretty good one. Desk. Yeah, he wanted me to find some evidence bag he collected. Get it to McKenna. Excuse me. You looking for some? These uh, these were the first photos taken. Yeah. Who's on the scene first? I was. Look, in all these photos, the doors to the trailer, they're open. Yeah, that's right. They were open when I got there, wide open. So? Is there any way they can be unlocked from the inside? No. Not unless they were busted open. Were they? You examined the bolt? This has got to do with anything. I locked the doors and latched them up before I had it towed away. I didn't see any evidence to suggest that bolt had been broken. Cerebral hematoma. The blow that killed him was the back of the head. Someone went back there and surprised him. Maybe so. Expect me to talk. Expect you to die. me. You better help me up or I'm gonna wake him up and find a bigger pillow. I didn't kill anyone. Yeah, the word is you never left the bar, but you saw Bobby leave. He left for about an hour, yeah, but he came yeah, back. he went up to campsite for my wife. Your wife? Bobby, hell no. I got proof. He went to steal your damn car. How'd he get up there?
What Bobby do for Gans? He was making Jonah's pickups from the Indian casino. You know, kickbacks. But Bobby was skimming off the top. How'd you find that out? See, so, man, now you're making Bobby pay you to keep quiet. How could you know that? He just told me. Well, so what? I knew Jonah would find out sooner or later. See, he couldn't have Bobby telling his dad about the poison being dumped on the reservation. And he figured, you know, he might try to blackmail him if he didn't back off about the money. But Bobby never would have talked. Never. Yeah. He left a message on his dad's machine that night. What do you think he said? I don't know. He was going to leave town, but... Uh... Somebody killed him. Yeah. I heard it was you. Anyway, when he came back to the Morning Star, he was alone. He said your car wasn't up there, but... Morning. Yeah, he seemed messed up, scared. Morning Star. You know anybody who has a dog carries a knife? A lot of guys around here carry knives. Okay, he was alone when he came back the first time. What about when he left the second time? The last I saw him, he was with Jonah. Why don't you go bug him? It's Friday, he'll be at the fight club on 9th. One more thing. Where Bobby stashed the money? Don't tell me the bank. Find Bobby's truck. There's a panel under the driver's seat. He used to keep it in a gym bag in there. I don't get it. It's the wrong gun, wrong blood. Just need to sleep it off. Not the liquor or the chokehold you put on me. Sorry about that. Hey, um, your, uh, your dad alive? No. Is he a cop? Yeah. Well, whatever I couldn't do, uh, or didn't do for my son when he was alive, I, uh... I gotta make it up to him now, you understand that, don't you? Yeah. I understand that. Well, good night. I tried you earlier, but well, listen, Dad, I gotta tell you something. It's bad. I'm trying to stop it. Look, I, I can't talk right now. I'll try you later on, okay? Dad, I'm sorry. Closing up. Come back tomorrow. Take to Pruitt. I'm looking for the washing machine came over from the hospital. Why? Because I work in none of your damn business division. They're over there. Turn those lights back on. You can't. They're on a timer.
God's sake, Billy! You don't throw a jab, he'll do that every single time! Tough sport boxing. So they say, detective. You ever throw on the gloves yourself for competition? Yeah. Back in the day. You? No, no, no. I prefer the corner. That's where you really control the fighters. You got another one of those? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Glad to see someone who can appreciate the finer things. Billy! If you're not gonna trade jabs, then get out of the damn ring! Bobby enjoy the finer things? Bobby's taste in tobacco ran closer to camels and Cubans. Something he learned from his father. So he never smoked one of those? I would say not. Well, I found one in Bobby's rig. It was a Monte Cristo. One of yours? Attaboy, Bill! Go after him! Go after him! Bobby was using one of my company trucks to get around. Could have left that in there any time. I considered that. But you said these Cubans only just arrived on the day that Bobby was killed. You did say that, right? Meaning? Meaning, if you only just got them, how could they be in Bobby's rake any time before that night? <laughs> Is this going somewhere, detective? Yeah, it is. And so are you. Full charges against this man. Hey! Harassment. Hey! Police brutality. Hey! hey, hey. Assumption. A little out of your province here, detective. Caught a citizen's arrest. Yeah? Well, you picked a pretty prominent citizen. What's the charge? Murder. And who did he supposedly kill? Bobby McKenna. I see. And how do you know that? You check his prints, they'll match the ones found on the cigar ban I found in Bobby's truck. This man isn't even a police officer. How can you possibly trust the integrity of any evidence he may have planted in my truck? Sorry, Jonah. If Mr. Pruitt here has something to say about this investigation, McKenna is going to listen. I found this in a panel underneath the seat of Bobby's truck. Gans killed Bobby because he caught him stealing. You tell McKenna what I said. Maybe you better tell him. What exactly is this? The nail in his coffin. I don't understand why we're in such a hurry. That would take too long to explain. Sometimes it's better if you don't have to tell me everything. You're just gonna have to trust me. Are you okay? Yeah. All right. Ready? Yeah. Where are you going? We're leaving. Thank you for your concern. A what? Brock Gantz in late last night. Yeah. Claimed he killed Bobby over some money he found out Bobby was stealing from him. Hell of a lot of cash. His lawyer's been coming around here like clockwork. Where did, uh, where did Pruitt come up with all this? He found that cigar bound in Bobby's truck. Claimed Gantz's prints are on it and that you'd understand. I checked. There is a thumbprint. Mean anything to you? Yeah, it's Cuban. Gantz just got him. Look. You searched that truck. How the hell did you miss all this cash? How is that he possible? He claimed it was in a panel under the seat. Look, Mac, something else. What? After Pruitt left, Wayne came by here. Had these with him. Claims the impressions we found by the roadside matched the white stone tires on Pruitt's car. Exact same tire type. I talked to David. He found a section of white stone tire at the murder scene. Now, I looked all through his desk and I couldn't find it. Morgan, you said yourself he had a blowout recently. And Pruitt could have taken evidence from here any time. What are you saying? Wayne also brought over a 9mm automatic. 
a Glock. He found it stuffed in the frame of a washing machine at the junkyard. And so? Those machines were only just taken there from the hospital. The prints on the nine, the Pruitts. I called his captain back. He says all Metro detectives are issued a 38. Yes, I know that. Well, his primary was a nine Glock. Yeah. Well? Shell casing you found was fired from the nine that Wayne brought in. All right, um, call the hospital, get somebody over to his wife's room, that's where he'll be. Doc Leeds said he just took her and left. Why don't you wait tomorrow to tell me that? Danny, can you slow down? Jess. You were attacked. You pointed a man out, you told me he was the one. He wasn't. Now that man's dead. I didn't do it. The best thing for us to do is get out of here. Danny. Danny, he had tattoos. He had tattoos. The dog and the knife. You're describing his tattoos. There was another man. He, he didn't... He just stood there and he watched it happen. I understand now. You know who did this? Yeah, I know who did this. You can't just let him go free. Your career, McKinnon. You think about that. If what Pruitt says holds water, it's your life. You think about that. Got a fresh eyeball. He's turned off 21 South, heading toward the junkyard. He's probably going there to pick up his gun. Everyone stay clear. I'm gonna handle this on my own. The weapon. No. Don't test me, boy. Danny! This is the man who attacked Kill my him. wife. He did it! Stop making some sense, Pro. Okay now, Jess. Tell me. Tim! Are you sure? Yes. You're absolutely Yes! All right. I promise to help each other. I'll go first. Next case. I, I didn't kill you, son. You're a liar. Look, you went up to the campsite to steal my car. When the car wasn't there, Wayne changed the plan on him. <laughs> Look, I didn't kill you, son. Look, Mullion. Yes, I found 
I found his varsity pin from his jacket. He left it there. That's why he left the message on your machine. He needed to tell somebody. Dad, I'm sorry. I keep barreling down that road and I'm looking for a hospital oh. and we almost collided. Jessica identified him as the guy, so I jumped him and I put him in the back of the trailer and I, and I locked the doors. When your deputies arrived, the doors were open. You send the crime scene photos, Morgan. Look when I left your son alone. He was alive. It was Gans. He was in front of the cab the whole time. He went back there and he finished him. That's why the cigar man was in there. You lied to me. You gotta believe me. You gotta believe me, Morgan. It was Gans. Bobby had things on him that would bury him forever. Look at him. He knows! He's not going anywhere. How the hell would you know that? The boy was a thief, McKenna! Turn around. The both of you turn around. Turn around. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna shoot me? A dozen people know you brought me here! Yeah, you're, uh, you're right. I can't shoot you. Better, how about yourself? Withholding evidence, impeding on a criminal investigation, aggravated assault. I'll clean that all up. Now, why don't you just take your beautiful wife here and uh, get the hell out of here? If you ever come back, uh, come by and talk to me. Set me free. 